How do you get your first customer as a startup? This is a big question that we get all the time and it's so vital because if you don't answer this, how can you go and make get 100 customers, 1,000 customers, a million customers and so on? And so we're gonna share what we've seen works and also what doesn't work from the thousands of companies that we've seen and interviewed uh, and many of which we've directly worked with. Now, my name is Arya Chittasi and I'm the director of Vingenesis Ventures and we're passionate about supporting entrepreneurs to get to the next level and sharing the, the insights and the mechanisms that can really support your startup to grow. Now, one quick story, I remember being with a founder and he told me that they had just mortgaged their house. They had put $500,000 in a couple of years in building a product. And then they came to us and they said, hey, we just have one question. I said, what's that? They go, how do we get our first customer? And man, my heart just sank. I mean, you know, it was far too late for them to ask this question. So I hope that, you know, this video, and if you're watching, you can implement this as early as possible. You can start thinking about it and planning for it because it's so important for you to not only move down the product line, uh, but also what we call the market line, developing your market demand. So what are we gonna go through in this video? I'm gonna go through these typical strategies, like should you just hire a marketing firm and do the typical marketing like Facebook and social media ads? Uh, we're gonna go through and investigate that. I'm gonna also go through, is it just about networking and grinding and you just need to pump it out there and hustle? I'm gonna go through and, and deconstruct that. We're gonna talk about the role of trust in your product, building trust and, and utilizing trust to, to leverage uh, inside building your product. And then uh, we're gonna go into sales and marketing systems um, if you want to build a scalable venture, okay? Finally, I'm gonna go into a direct exercise on what you can do today so you can start building your customer base you know, now, especially if you're in the first one to 10 customers. Now, there's a couple of places that you might be in. You might be thinking about getting started. You haven't begun yet, but you're just predicting ahead. You're going, hey, how can I get my first customer if I go along this journey of startup entrepreneurship? So if that's you, that's awesome because you're doing it very early on. Otherwise, you might be having developed a prototype or maybe an MVP, maybe you've got your app in your hands and you're, you're just about ready to go. If that's you, then this is gonna to apply too. Now, let's first go through a few key misperceptions or things that we hear. Let's start with the first common misperception that it is all about this type of typical marketing activity. So this can be social media ads, like should you just go jump on Facebook and spam all of these ads out there or maybe Google ads, all of this different pay-per-click. If you go speak to a lot of agencies, you know, usually these will be at the top of their list. Should you do lots of article marketing and PR and should you get, uh, you know, uh, your, your face on the front page of Forbes or, or you know, the, the local newspaper? Or do you need to go put a budget together for conference and exhibitions, yeah? Now, all of these things are great and they play their part, but if you want to get your first one customer or your first hundred customers, they are absolutely not required. And here's why, because what you wanna do if you're building a startup uh, and scalable startup business, you wanna build scalable sales and marketing systems, not only focusing on activity. Now, what's the difference? The so activity is you going out and just getting another customer, you getting another client. But if you really wanna to scale and multiply and duplicate your results, you need to build a system, something that is repeatable and works over and over again, okay? Now, if you dive in from day one and you go pay for you know, $100,000 of Facebook ads or something like that, the question is, what is in your formula? You know, what are you putting, what are you exactly saying? Do you know that your message is validated? Do you know the avatars or the people, the, the customers, the potential customers? Do you know who they are so that you can filter them well on, on the Facebook ad? Right? So these are things that you need to, as a founding team, go out and discover, and it takes a lot of energy and effort. You know, you can't just guess that and know, you know, even the smartest marketing consultants or agencies in the world, they can't just come and give that to you. They actually need to go through uh, really rapid and intentional validation themselves. So, so don't, especially for the first to, to even 100 and even beyond, you know, slightly beyond that, those numbers of customers, don't worry too much about this typical marketing activity. And you don't need to even put aside a budget for that. 
we want to focus on your your resourcefulness as a founding team there's still a lot you can do and the fact is you do need to build your way up you need to be building the foundation which is for example your product your product has to deliver the thing that you you know you're promising it delivers you also need to be getting your conversion points out of the way you need to know that once people come in you can actually get them on board now another misperception is should you just network your way out to your first customer some people even tell you it's just about hustle 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 you just speak to everyone and just try to badger them until someone buys and it's a numbers game right people will say yeah getting your first customer or getting sales it's just a numbers game just speak to like 10,000 people and at least one person has to buy now uh, it's it's not 100 percent wrong but it's not the full picture and let me tell you why you see at in genesis we see that being an entrepreneur and building a product what you're doing fundamentally is that you're going to address the pain or the problems of some other human being you need to go out and you need to know that other human being we call it your avatar right you need to understand them you need to build a relationship with them you know more than you would your your intimate a life partner right you need to know them inside out what drives them so your job in getting your first customer is to go out there and find the person who matches that that person who you wish to serve right they should have a certain problem or pain points so you don't want to indiscriminately just go out and sell your solution to everyone right you want to go out and find the people who are experiencing that pain or problem and now this part is where the networking can take effect, right? You do want to capitalize on your network. And I'll speak a little bit about how trust plays a role in a moment. Now you go in, you do want to speak to your network. You want to identify who has that pain that you're serving. You're gonna focus a lot on your relationship with those customers. So let me talk quickly about trust. You see, at the beginning, people are gonna trust you as a person, as a human being, and gradually they're going to develop that trust they're going to test your product and as you go on and go on and you have more users you have more reviews and more stories about people enjoying your product and then your product is going to be able to stand on its own two feet and have the trust does that make sense so a lot of people for example they they love apple and then they are just followers of apple and then they would follow apple for whatever product came up right but then gradually now, I don't know if Apple is the best you know, example because obviously it's a, it's a huge business already, but I think you get the point. People trust the provider. People trust you as a human being if you're an entrepreneur. You go out to your network and they are leveraging that trust. In fact, we've seen a lot of people who have gotten investment, not because of their product or business plan, but how they are being yeah, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. So that tells you that people invest in you first and then gradually, you know, in your product, and then you can imagine your product having a hundred reviews and everyone's raving about it. Well, people won't care much about you as a provider. They'll start trusting the product. So this is something really important to see, you know, don't fall into these fancy marketing strategies and go, oh, come on, let's go do a radio ad or, you know, this very sophisticated funnel in day one. That's, there's time for that later. At the beginning, you wanna be so focused on finding and building those relationships starting with your own and your founding team and then leveraging them to get the stories of success of how you're serving your customer through your product now this part is key this is the difference between a small business owner and then a startup founder building a scalable business see if you're if you're building especially a technology business it's likely that you want to scale it maybe around the world maybe to hundred thousands or millions of customers now, to do that, you can't rely on sales and marketing activity alone. You need to be looking at sales and marketing systems. Now, again, what's the difference? You are identifying and validating different parts of your formula that works. You see, Uber has their formula. They know how to repeatedly get drivers onto their platform. And they're not going out there and just handshaking each person at the same time. They have a very carefully designed meticulous system that allows them to get drivers over and over and over again and if you remove that system and then you try to sell uber the the value of that company would be remarkably lower yeah it's not just their their app and their product these sales and marketing systems are just as valuable okay 
So if you're just getting your first customer, I invite you to start having this mindset. Yeah, we call it the being of higher purpose, seeing the big view, big picture, even from day one. You wanna start looking at how am I speaking even to this individual and then you're mapping what are their pains? What do they care about? Yeah, what are their problems and how do you need to present and communicate yourself and your product in a way that works, but that's gonna be repeatable for thousands, for millions later, okay? So this is what we find the highest performing entrepreneurs do even from day one. It doesn't cost a lot of money, but it, it means that you need to challenge yourself, right? As a founding team, you need to go out there and be really on your game building these from, from uh, scratch at the beginning. Now, a quick contrast, what does this mean? You see, if you are out there just doing activity, right? As in you, someone tells you to do a radio ad, so you go do a radio ad and you get in 200 customers and you go, oh, that really worked. The next day you do uh, you know, a digital marketing campaign, like some Facebook referral strategy, that works a little bit and then you, know, you stop that. And then you do the next, the next. Well, that's what we mean by activity. It's like each of them are just being done with no real cohesive strategy and you don't have a system where you're learning and extracting the juice from them to create that repeatable engine or system in the long term. So that's actually a way you can spend a lot of money. We've been with people who have spent millions of dollars in, in their sales and marketing, but they weren't building a system. And then other people with far less capital, because they were building a system, they were able to move much faster and even speak to investors in a better way, showing that they're here to build something of high scale. So let's wrap up with an exercise for what this exactly means for you. If you're in the position of building your startup and you wanna get your first customer or your first you know, 10, this is what we recommend you do, even though it's not the only way. Uh, I just wanna make it as tangible as possible. So sit down and write a list of as many people as possible that you know in your whole network. Yeah, you might put it in a big spreadsheet. Go and highlight the people who, not, number one, are related to the industry or you know related to the product that you're doing. But secondly, highlight all the people as well who have a really deep trust with you that you know that they even wanna support you. You see, at the beginning, you wanna leverage uh, what we call being vulnerable. You don't wanna go and put this persona out there like your product is perfect and it's so amazing and people should buy it. Actually leverage this fact that people wanna support you. Get out there and build this amazing startup, right? So, so uh, there'll be a time where you won't be able to capitalize that any longer. This is the time to, to use that. So build then, uh, come up with a very basic high level script. I don't even wanna use that term because it's not like you wanna read something. Just come up with the dot points of who exactly are you serving? You know, who would be right for you to speak to or not right to speak to? What's their pain? What, what's their, the challenge that they're dealing with? And then how are you suggesting that it's solved? Get in, don't go to sell. First, see that this is valid, what you're doing, and then build the relationship to then introduce your product. And if you see that they're getting value, then you can have a conversation about uh, you know, the, the price or the terms, and then that, that would turn into your first sale. Now, I'm looking forward to hearing your comments below. If you have had experience with this, if you've had your own challenges with getting your first customer or your first you know, 10 or 20 customers, put that down so that we can share more knowledge about what it takes to get, get there because the more that we crack this point, the, the more we can help you know, great companies scale. If you found this valuable, if you think that this is making a difference to you, like and subscribe so we know to bring you more of the same. Aside from that, I invite you to really squeeze the juice out of this and I hope it makes a difference in your business. I will see you next time.